Oh boy. Uh, Wendy, Wendy, welcome to the platform. Hi there. How are you going today? Um, actually, I'm still pretty shell-shocked, to be honest. Yeah. Like, really, uh, what happened on Saturday, it was the scariest thing I have ever been through. I was absolutely Were you terrified. there, Wendy? I was there. Jeez, okay. Tell us your experience. I was there. It was, it was so frightening. And there were no police. There was nobody there for us. I didn't know how we were going to get out of there. Yeah. There was only there must have only been a few hundred people, you know, that were supporting Chris Luxon Kelly Luxon says it looks pretty peaceful to him. What would you say to Chris oh, Luxon? Oh, what a load of rubbish! Absolute rubbish! I swear to God, if he had been there, like I say, absolutely terrifying. We wanted safety. We finally got out of there, and they were everywhere. And I was with my sister, and we were like, w- "Where do we go? Like, where, where can we go?" And we thought, I know, we'll go to Aotea Square because we knew that Brian Tamaki was down there and that he had security and there'd be police there. So we went down there because we want, we needed safety. We were so frightened. It's a weird world where people are running to Destiny Church, women are running to Destiny Church to keep them safe oh, as the police stand by. That's, uh, that's an alternate universe, isn't it, Wendy? It totally is. And I mean, look, I've never been a supporter of his, ever, or been a fan, but it was the only place we felt like we could get some protection. And we did. We got there and we were welcomed and there were men everywhere. The rainbow community all came down with their, descended on us again Mm. down there. But they didn't use the same level of violence and aggression because we were surrounded by men. Yeah. Funny that. But we got look, look, right in the middle of where all the men and were. And Wendy, what have we come to where public demonstration and protest, whether it's successful or not, is literally defined by who would win a physical confrontation? There is something horribly exactly. wrong here. Yeah, and I mean, we we were easy targets. Yeah. Easy targets. And there was, you know, we, we was talking to a woman who just got off when we got out. She said, I've been on the phone to the police. She said, I've been calling saying, we need police here. They didn't come. Yeah. They didn't care about us. They weren't worried about our safety. That... Those rainbow trans protesters were given free reign to do whatever they wanted. Yep, I hear you. I hear and you. then they were given free reign to carry on back down Queen Street and then do it all over again. Yeah, yep. And celebrated. Yay, what heroes. Wendy, I thank you for your call. Hang in there. Thank you. And thank you, thank you for listening to us and letting us speak. That's what it's about. No, that's what it's about. Avis, how are you this morning? Um, to be honest, Sean, I've run the gauntlet, the gauntlet of emotions. I have before in the past, but yep. That's um I thought Wellington was bad. <laughs> oh mate. Yeah, it is. Okay. So I refuse as a natural born DNA woman. Mm-hmm. To give up any rights or minimise any rights that my forebears fought for appropriately. Mm. They were abused, they were victimised, they were put in prison, you name it. But the reality is that this shows very clearly how incredibly sick our country has become. Whether you agree with her or not, she had the right to speak. And women had the right to feel safe and be kept safe. Anybody, even if their husbands, their sons, whatever, came to support. People had the right to go and hear what was said. Yeah. For the community that call themselves transgender, I really do appeal that like you and others and all of us have said, do not tar that brush upon the whole of the community. 
It is a small minority who are incredibly radical and with their very loud voice have been able to take over, really. Um, one of your callers said that people, that, that homosexual, transgender folk are leaving the rainbow community. I can understand why. Every gay friend that I have is absolutely horrified at what went down. They're heartbroken because that's not going to solve anything. It doesn't get the message across. All it does is it, it gets people's backs up and it, they've damaged. They've damaged what has been long fought for. Sean? I hear you, Avis. You know, back in the 80s, I look at how, that's what makes my heart, you hang in there, Avis, and I thank oh, you for calling. I thank you for all thing. your calls. Um, just hang in there. Ah, uh, look, Ben and I have decided we're going to dump the news again. Um, we're here to provide a platform for people to speak and speak their truth, and you're doing that in huge numbers. Kevin and Douglas, I know you've been waiting for nearly half an hour each now, but I've got women who want to talk, and that's the brief uh, today, the text. Uh, Look, I'm sure Michael will continue this conversation afterwards. It is important. This is a safe space for everyone. And Chanel and Max, I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening to what you've done. And I invite you, in the spirit of debate and free speech, to ring in yourselves and explain to us whether this is what you wanted or if it's all gone horribly wrong. Uh, Marie, welcome. Hello, Sean. How are you? Good morning. Um... I'm I'm absolutely horrified. I was one of the um, women that were going to speak um, when? today. When? Yeah, um, in Wellington. In Wellington, yes. Yeah. And of course, it was cancelled. I come from. I'm an old working class lesbian. I came out before gay liberation, and I would. You were really a lesbian like, before it was fashionable, Marie. Is that what you're telling me? I was yeah. indeed, and it was not very nice. I know the face of hate. We saw it. Yeah. We, we saw it when we had come out of our venues, and women got beaten up. They got raped. Uh. All sorts of the lesbians. The face of hate still there, only the mob is huge. We were dealing with single groups of men trying to hide and run and whatever we did to survive. But now this is a different level. And it's all down to how this LGBTQ group was formed. And I want to talk about that if I can. Yes, you can, Marie. I'm all ears. That is it all. Um, Okay, let's just start. LGBTQ plus. Forget about it being a rainbow, glitter, uh, lovely place for um, anybody lesbian, gay, whatever. Oh, the, 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 it is now a corporate political lobby group. And you know that already because of the rainbow tick. Yeah, There's well, a lot of money I hate to say it. I get no joy in saying I have been kind of pointing this out for a while. Yeah, and if you want to know more about how much money is behind all this and how much money is fed into this, I can send you a link of a woman who has been um, researching this for years and yep. finds it she finds it hard to get a platform. There's a, a two-hour lecture she gave, and she condenses it all into the, her lecture, and you will have your mind blown. I'll send you that link afterwards if you're wanting to see it. Um, what we find now with the LGBTQ plus is now controlled by the T in the Q. Yeah. And doesn't represent lesbians or gays or bi. Um, I've never been to a Pride or Rainbow Parade. I've never been had any connection to that except for um, supporting uh, decriminalising the gay men. Where the hell are they now? I'm bugger if I know. Um, I, wonder, I want to add that... Um, what kind of a dangerous truth are they afraid of that the trans rights activists and with the aid of the government and the mainstream media, they are inciting violence to stop women from speaking? What are they so afraid of? And the whole, the whole thing that boils down to it's not hate to tell the truth. It's yeah. not hate speech. The truth is the truth. And you might not like hearing it, but it's a Look, I've been called all the vile, um, vile names that you can think of. I'm 72 now. I've had it all. I mean, after a while, you, so you sort of think, you know, you, when you have some fundamentalist Christian telling you that you should be smothered at first at birth, all I can say is, well, I wasn't aware I was a lesbian when I popped out of my mother's Well, birth. Marie, the interesting <laughs> thing that's happening here, though, is that the fundamentalist Christians are with you right now. 
Oh, yeah, everybody who sort of wants to have um, tradition, our history. They, they want to erase our history. They take lesbians that we know from the past and they're calling them trans men. Uh, no, look, what I'm they, saying they is I think fundamental, I think right-wing politics and fundamentalist Christian politics is lining up with you, with lesbians. I think some strange well, they, alliances... They're lining up with me as a lesbian. They're lining up with the fact that there's things going wrong. They're seeing that they are in danger too from this this um, lobby group that's coming out. And um, I think that that's, they, they're seeing that it's going to be dangerous um, for them. My partner and I, we, we did sandwich board um, sort of uh, protests in, in the square in Palmerston North. And all we did was we had sandwich boards on us saying what was happening. This is before the, the bills were put through. Um, and we were inviting the public to come up to us. We weren't going to them. And we had people coming to us and asked, well, what's that about? And I had a Christian guy that came up. Now, he, he in the past would have been the enemy. Yep. And I said to him, you need to be careful. They're going to come for your church. And the look on his face, he really, he got it. Yeah. And it's not that they're there to defend us. They, they're going to probably come out and say awful things about us anyway, but that doesn't matter. And as I said, I've had all the, all the nasty names and everything. Somebody calling me transphobic or racist or this and that, oh, poof, go away. It, it means it's, it's, duck off, it's water off a duck's back now because I've seen it all. But still, all. Marie, you, couldn't, you couldn't say what you thought in the civic square of my city no. on Sunday because no. violence was used on Saturday in Auckland and the police did not intervene and that makes me yeah. weep for my country. And I, I rang, my partner rang 111 because we were watching the live stream because yeah. we were going to be speaking the next day. And then she just could not handle the response that she got from the uh, woman on the other end. So I took over, gave my name, gave clear um, yeah. description. I, I admit I was pretty pumped up and I was yelling yeah. a bit. And telling her, I know it's not you, but why are you not taking down the details? She asked my partner three times, where was it? They were stalling us. And I think that they were told not to, not to do anything. I have and, a horrible suspicion that that is the case, Marie. Yes, it definitely is. Now, I want to just go on about a few other things because I want to talk about gay liberation. It started in 1972. Yep. And I didn't know anything about it because I was in the Navy and I hung out with the um, Bar Dykes and everything. We had our own scene. We'd already yeah. got our own club together in yeah. 1971. The, the Gay Liberation come about in the university in Auckland. Yeah. Now, there's a reason why the word lesbian wasn't there at the time. The yeah. woman who stood up and said, who's going who's gonna to join me and begin yeah. the Gay Liberation and rah, 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 she didn't use the word lesbian because the word lesbian was a dirty word in those days. It was a slur. And everybody, including myself, we hid behind the gay because that was more acceptable. So what, what I'm finding now is that the word lesbian... It is, a, I mean, it is more acceptable than gay after what we saw over the weekend, Marie. Well, no, it's not actually because <laughs> they're eliminating us. They, you have to realise that this LGBTQ lobby group, they, are, they got on board on the back of the lesbian and gay mm. bisexual movement. Yeah. It was a grassroots movement that ended up being um, successful. It wasn't funded by huge amounts of money. And then they went too far. They went to go for sex, self, um, um, self sex marriage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to say that just because we're lesbians, it doesn't mean to say we all agree. I am opposed to that. I always yeah. have been. And I think that um, there was no consultation with um, the Christian people who find it sacred and all that kind of shit. Yeah. But the thing is that that brought the tea in, and the tea, the transgender that came onto the act and then had the money. Yeah. And they brought the money with them. Yeah. And what happened then yeah. is they latched onto the LBG group like a tick. And they hung on. And then they got stronger. And that's why the Ackermans have added on yeah. and added on and added on. Now, this is a very, very dangerous lobby yeah. group now. It's, it's gone past what it started off. And, well, they weren't even part of it when it started out. Because just remember, transgender is not a sexuality. 
And then how how do, how can they get all the heterosexual young people who want to join this glitter, this rainbow shit? Well, you know, they're, they're scaring the hell out of them. They're telling them at universities they, they, and in they, their they workplaces that if they do anything that looks like saying, oh, I don't quite agree that they're going to be yelled down, shouted down, lose their jobs. Look at what happened to the Today FM people who said men couldn't have babies. They are literally re-educated by their company at threat of losing their jobs. Marie, I, can I ask you uh, Can I ask you to keep listening to the platform and ring yeah. me regularly? Because yeah, yeah, well, you're, yeah, you're, I, I, I've really loved more, talking to you today. I really have. Can I really say something else? Yeah. I think that... Yep. that, that um, the 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 heterosexuals have joined in, and they're the ones who call themselves non-binary. That's oh how they that's how they've grown. That's how they've included them all. We're all just and you will know you will know when this this lobby group has got so strong and so powerful when they can drop because they go in under the umbrella of LGB. They know they cannot do that on their own at the moment. Yeah. That's why when the drag queens go to the library, and I've been to one to actually see yeah. what they do there. Yeah. They go under the umbrella of LGB because they know if they went under um, as a drag Tra queen, yeah. transgender, the public are not ready to take them on board. Marie, they are forcing them to lie down your throat. Yeah, Marie, I thank you so much for your call. Wow, what a morning. Oh, God, I've got to put a pitch in. You are listening to this amazing and real exchange of views and what really happened in Albert Park on Saturday and what's really happening. You're listening to it on the platform. We are a commercial business. We do ask for some money for you. If you want to, join Platform Plus. It means you can listen to all this again at your pleasure and download and listen offline. It is just $3 a bloody week. It's nothing. It's nothing. And you get Platform Plus by going to the App Store or the Google Store and downloading the Platform app. And on the platform app, it will tell you how you can join Platform Plus. If you, and I'm not going to say like what you're hearing this morning, if you understand how free speech is so important in this country, I implore you, I'm not going to beg, I implore you, and I ask you to so, show support from the platform, become a Platform Plus member. And look, what's so, so heartening for me this morning is this is a place where people can ring in and talk their truth. Bradley, Kevin, Douglas, I'm sorry. It's Woman's Day. You're still going to have to wait. Let's have a quick breather. I'm going to give it to you if you hold your breath just for a moment. <laughs> I can smell the uranium on it as you lean towards it. What you have to say counts on the platform. It sure does, and uh, I want your views. The number to call, 0800 33 We've dumped a whole lot of... Helen, I'm sorry, we just got so many calls. Helen Houghton, uh, who was there, she's the leader of the... Of the uh, what's it? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get Helen up. Um, we've dumped a few interviews this morning because I think your real stories and reactions are more important. Bridget, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Morena, Sean. Uh, thank you for having me. And first of all, I'd just like to thank you for um, providing this platform for us. I, I, to be honest, I'd never heard of you. I'm really sorry. But um, no. last week I was just so upset about Posey Parker and all the horrendous um, media attention that she was getting. Um, and I started looking through YouTube and I came across you and I've signed up. <laughs> and um, I'm just, this, I feel like this is the only genuine place that um, we can freely um, express our opinions and have debate so um, yeah I, I guess I'm just uh, I'm not adding anything new that none of the other women haven't said before me but um, I just wanted to give a perspective I guess yep. from uh, as a mother of two young children and um, and I've got most of my friends fully support this as well um, as mums of young kids and um, I'm in Wellington and we were all set to go down just to, and we had the intention of just going down to sit, um, you know, peacefully and just show our support to Posey Parker. Um, and then I was, so I was watching with, you know, anticipation on Saturday and when I saw her live stream of it, I, I can't, I, honestly, I started crying. I was, I guess all it showed to me, I did not expect it. I actually had full hope that, um, I did believe that she would be allowed to speak. I, I genuinely did. I thought the police would be there. 
So everything I truly believed did not happen and I really saw the death of free speech in New Zealand, which, in all honesty, I started to see with COVID, with the mandate protest yeah. last year. I saw a heavily biased media, um, so I've lost all trust in them. And now they're reporting um, false accounts. They are heavily biased towards um, the, acti- the activists. Um, and, yeah, I guess I'm very, very disappointed. I did wonder if there'd be something still on uh, yesterday, but I was too terrified to go down. And in all honesty, look, well, I've had to give a pseudonym. I can't say who I really am. Uh, New Zealand's very small. You can get there's major social repercussions for women uh, with opinions on this topic. Um, you oh, on all topics in all honesty. You either yeah. go along with that wokery nonsense or you're cancelled. Um, and as a mother, I've got to be very careful for my kids as well. I can't. Um, I don't want them um, being socially outcasted for any opinion. So it's um, as a mum, this is very terrifying. I do wa- wonder where's. Where's truth gone? What's, you know, objective, rational truth and logic that, you know, we can look outside, we see the grass is green. You know, but now we've been told people's subjective experiences are more, um, that's reality. You know, it's yeah. very, it's a scary place we're in. And I do wonder what the outcome for kids is going to be. Already yeah. I've had um, children come, you know, say stuff that they shouldn't be talking about, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Children, why aren't we letting kids be kids? Um, instead, they, they're sort of getting indoctrinated at, from an early age, either through their parents, through even cartoons, children cartoons, um, just about this the gender ideology. Um, I Bridget, I, um, I think there are some really disturbing things happening in our education system and in our schools, and we haven't been allowed to talk about them. Can I say? Absolutely. Th- can I say thank you for getting on the platform and for ringing up? And the more people who do. And you might be yep. getting the impression we're a place that does it a little differently. Yep. Okay, so tell your friends there is a place that is safe for free speech and ideas that may not be popular but yes. still need to be aired. And I thank you so much it's, for ringing in. Oh, you're, honestly, thank you. And I just want to say with a, a country with appalling violence against women, Sexual assault, every, I think it's one in three women have reported mm. being sexually abused in some way. And now we have had, women have had no say as to opening our doors, uh, our sex segregated places, which we are, are, you know, safe because they're private, changing rooms, etc. We've yeah. had no say in that. That's yeah. the thing that's infuriating. I personally, I've got nothing against people living yeah, however they lives. choose to live. Yeah. I've got no problem with that. That's not the issue. The issue is that it's encroaching on women's rights and there's no place to have a healthy discussion about that so there we is. can come to a resolution. There is. It's called the platform, Bridget, and you're part of it now. I thank you so much for your call. All right. Look, I'm getting some messages saying let the guys talk. Hundreds, hundreds of texts this morning. And I will, but guys, just keep it short. Women are so used to listening to us blather on. And they really didn't get a chance to say anything. They were bullied by uh, by men on Saturday. Kevin, that's epic, mate. You've been waiting for 44 minutes, 45 minutes. Thank you for your patience. Oh, Kira, Sean. Um, look, I keep it, we'll keep it brief. I just want to talk about um, News Hub and the fact that there were two separate uh, items. And in the second one, I believe, Amelia Wade, who's their political reporter, blurred out Kelly J. King. Uh, she was actually... Oh, that was the whole car. Nazi signal thing. It was bullshit. She was yeah. doing up the zipper on her sweater. Uh, yeah, there's another News Hub one, a straighter report where it's just like she just does up her zipper. The reason behind that is I saw these different left-wing blogs saying she's a white supremacist, we need to go and smash her sort of stuff because of Amelia Wade's report. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's, it's a, oh, no, I, I think, I, and I'm going to say definitively, the mainstream media in this country are as responsible for the violence and mob rule on Saturday as anyone else. So I, I just really wanted to highlight that. Yeah, and the fact thank, I actually joined yeah. the Free Speech Union after this weekend because this is outrageous. So thank you, Sean. Thank and you, and, Kevin, uh, yeah. and thanks for waiting. That's a patient man. Douglas, you've been patient for 43 minutes too. Welcome to the platform. Yeah, good morning, Sean. Yeah, thank you uh, for the opportunity. Um, listen, I'll try and I was I was there from the, for the through the whole thing, and 
I was there early. Um, the ladies you've had on previously were not over, <coughs> weren't overstating the, the the level of violence. It does, certainly doesn't come through in the videos that I've seen of it, um, and the intimidation and the fear. Um, the the well, I'll just give you a couple of um, observations so I don't take up too much time. Um, one was very early on. Um, I was wondering where are the police. No, I did see them, and and they were near Princess Street, probably 100, 150 metres away. Um, so they were there, and I expected them to to gather around and to, to into the no man's land with the mob um, to keep control of them. Uh, they weren't there. This this was um, for anyone with eyes to see was clearly a, a setup. The, the, they weren't a rabble. They weren't a mob. They were they were prepared. They were organised. They had a strategy, and um, I've got to say, well played, um, Christopher Hipkins, uh, because, um, okay, we can't stop um, Posey coming into the country, but we can certainly make life tough for her when she gets here. We can scare the bejesus out of her so that she leaves the country under police escort, Douglas. That's what happened, and it looks horribly like it was planned. Oh, 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 it was planned, and, and, and I can tell you that once... Um, we had a toddler with us, so we had to back yeah. out once the mob broke yeah. through and get to a safe place. But I went back in um, when Posey was still um, under the cosh, <clears throat> and there were th- I found five police officers under a tree about 50 metres away, and I, I, I found an officer about a head taller than me, and I'm a big guy, and uh, I said, mate, where, are you going in? You get, you know, you're going to do your job? And he just looked at me with this quizzical look on his face, and, and I kind of lost it and um, gave him a bit of a serve, and he told me to stand back. So I stood back and um, served him again. Um, but they weren't prepared. To, they were, they so were literally standing by while, while that dangerous situation. I, I've heard this from too many people, Douglas, to think it yeah. isn't true. And Posey might say they protected her. She doesn't know what went on. And and Douglas, you are not you you are far from the first person who has made this observation, and I thank you for your call, my friend. Um, wow, 0800 is the number to call. Paula, welcome to the platform. Thank you for waiting. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us. Hey, um, I just I was there in the crush, and um, very early on, or basically as soon as the barriers came down, and um, I was just in this crush of people. I'd taken a photo already of the 70-year-old who uh, had a very fresh black eye, which I've put onto Twitter. Um, my, I, I tweeted, where are the police? And it was a full 15 minutes before I saw any sign of them. Um, as in I had to, this was after Posey had left, I'd managed to climb up onto the... Um, out of safety, really, um, or tried to get to safety, and I climbed up on the rotunda, and I could see them, and they were just standing around with their arms crossed, and um, that was terrible. I had a sign, um, keep men out of women's sports, and that was taken from me and ripped into tiny pieces Who by buy? several people um, by the by the anti-trans, uh, sorry, by the by the protesters, yeah. uh, by the trans group. And um, I was told, uh, they looked me right in the eye and said to me, I should be ashamed of myself. Um, and I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm an athletic five foot 11 woman. And I felt so intimidated and so scared and, and I was shaking that I needed to find um, a male. I asked a male to, to help me out. To, to get me out of there safely. And I, I, it was just, it was, I've never been so terrified. And, you know, to be called a Nazi, well, that is so offensive to Jewish people because, you know, we were just there peacefully trying to listen to women speak. And that's what I went for. And I didn't get to hear any women speak. And that was really awful. Um, you know, and I think what would have happened if, Georgina Bayer was still with us. She would be condemning. I oh, know they've been co-opting her. The Max Tweedies and the Chanel Lyles have been, and the Green Party have been co-opting the ghost of Georgina Bayer to say she would have been ripping your sign off you. I think that's bullshit. Having known Georgina personally right. for many years, 
I agree with you, and I don't think that she. Yeah, I think she'd be rolling in her grave to to know what went on there and and what what was allowed to happen by the police. Um, and yeah, I think that that Chanel's completely incorrect about what he's saying. Yeah, well, he doesn't have he about. doesn't have the balls. Excuse the pun. To front up here this morning, neither does Max Tweedy or or Marima yeah. Davidson or Chloe Schwabrick, who went online last night and said that was a wonderful, peaceful protest. Well, she's on drugs. She is on drugs okay. quite clearly, it, isn't she? It, yeah. yeah, it was not peaceful at all. It was not peaceful. It was scary as fuck. Excuse my language. No, I think it's justified in in, in this setting. Paula, I thank you for ringing. Uh, look, uh, one other question, which I've asked everyone. Do you think the media, the mainstream media, when we've got Chris Luxon saying it looked pretty peaceful to me, do you think we're getting the real story? No, absolutely not. And I'm so grateful to have found you. Um, I found you um, a few weeks ago uh, on a different issue, and I'm so glad, and I just hope that everybody starts is starting to understand how evil our media is, the mainstream media. Yeah, well, we can make them better, Paula, but we've got to speak up and we've we've got to have a platform to do that. That's why we're here. I thank you so much for your call. 0800 33 Um This is why the platform's here. This is why we built it. Uh, it really is for days like today where there is nowhere where you can resist, where you can say this is wrong because... The mainstream media don't listen, your government doesn't listen, and you are abandoned by your police force. That is why the platform is here, literally. I thank you for all your calls this morning. I'm going to try and get through as many as I can. Um, I'm going to encourage Michael to, to take as many calls as you can. We're, we're, and look, I'm, geez, we haven't even talked about those warriors, have we? Hey, Bridget, uh, thank you for waiting. You there, Bridget? You the oh, oh, no. Oh, she was just standing by. Okay, we will go to... Oh, we're going to go to a bloke. Bradley. Bradley, thanks for waiting. Oh, no problem, Sean. Look, I just really want to thank the platform for giving us space for the um, woman to speak today. I mean, it looks like you can't gather and have free speech in New Zealand anymore. No, it does. That's exactly what it looks like. Bradley, well, what's your take as a bloke on what went down on Saturday? You know, I'm, honestly, I'm absolutely disgusted because that wasn't an anti-trans speaking event. That was women that were concerned about their safety and wanted to speak about it. And we had the media the whole week ramping this up as an anti-trans event. Oh, well, Nazi and, event almost, wasn't it? Oh, exactly. And, I mean, all of those women who turned up to speak are heroes, in my opinion. And, and I know there are a lot more that were too frightened frankly to to show up yeah yeah absolutely and, it, and there's and there's so much footage of the of assaults that took place uh on on that day as well and none of the mainstream media are talking about it no they aren't it was all a wonderful explosion of rainbow unicornness wasn't it bradley no it was just a peaceful protest no, nothing happened yeah do I you i mean Posey parker was literally almost crushed to death yeah Oh no, she. she you know, fled and this I, country. I honestly don't know what would have happened to her if the, if their security hadn't been able to hold the line. Yeah, and the police were standing just yards away doing nothing. Yeah, there's video footage of um, Voices for Freedom seeing that there was a whole squadron of police standing just around the corner, and they were just standing there doing nothing. Yeah, I. I and I, I, it's just crazy. Bradley, the question is: Do most New Zealanders know what really happened on Saturday, or are they being fed a completely false? narrative i mean chris luxon buys it oh it was mainly peaceful i can't see how they can because we don't have any of our mainstream media actually portraying what really happened on the day i mean they have a narrative and they're sticking to it and you know they're running interference we had marama davidson saying that all the violence in the world is caused by cis white males yeah um yeah hey look bradley if uh, you were at the prime minister's press conference this afternoon which i will be what would you like yep. to ask him I would like to ask them what's the standard for a minister. I want to see the correspondence between um, the police commissioner and whoever was in charge of um, protection for that day and why they weren't there because they had uh, almost a week's notice of this event and they knew the risk that was going to be there for those women.
Yeah. Bradley, I thank you so much for your call, mate. Keep listening to the platform. Keep calling in. We need as many voices as we can get. Well, cheers. Thank you, Sean. Cheers. Uh, 0800 33 2283. You are listening to the platform. Geez, I'm going to say it. The only independent, non-government funded, unbent, unbiased news media platform in the country that does talk radio. And if you like it, help me out. Uh, become a Platform Plus member for just $3 a week. Download our app, uh, Google app and the Play Store. I hope I haven't pushed it too hard this morning. This is why we are here. And I'll tell you that this is, from our figures that come through off the computer, this is the highest listenership we've ever had on the platform. And this is why we built it. For days like today and every day in New Zealand when we need the truth. Oh, okay. Lee, Lee, how are you? Oh, hi, Sean. I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, thank you very much for hosting this. Um, I'm a seasoned activist. I was um, in London in the 80s, and I, I marched on many, many protests. What for? Um, what what that, did you activise that, for, Lee? <laughs> Well, I was, um, I, 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 I'm a lesbian. Yeah. I was involved in lesbian strength marches. I was, I worked at the London Lesbian and Gay Centre. I was in all the pride marches during the 80s. I was in the poll tax march. Oh, I wow. was there. I saw the Brixton riots. I was an eyewitness to the police shooting of Mark Duggan yeah. 10 years ago when the riots erupted in Tottenham. Yeah. Now, I have been in, as I say, I've been in many, many, many different situations like this. Yep. I was going to go to the, um, to the rally in Wellington. Now, on Thursday, I started feeling very uneasy about it. So I went and I bought myself a hard hat. Now, I have never gone to a protest where I have had to take some kind of health, um, you know, health and safety equipment with me. So I bought a hard hat because I could see the frenzy that the media... Well, which side were you going to go and support? On Sunday. Well, I was I, I, I was I was going to, to listen to to um Kelly J King. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was go, I was going to listen to her, and I I, I I could just feel it that this this was going to go off. So on Sunday, I started watching it live, and the minute Posey really stepped foot on the ground, well, within a minute or two of Posey setting foot on the ground, I rang one one one. Because I was so concerned I didn't see any police. After about, I don't know, probably a seven or eight minute wait, I was able to speak to a, a, you know, a dispatcher or something like that, whatever they're called. I gave very clear location details. Um, and as, as I was talking to the police, like probably maybe a minute or two in, I did see the police finally come and protect um, Kelly, Kelly J. And the the person who I was speaking with was saying, you know, well, she's now, you know, she's, I said, you know, the police are there. And she said, oh, well, that's right. Then I said, no, it's not. I said, what about the other women that are there? Where are the police? The police need to get to the other women. And from what I've heard from the, from listening to your show, the police actually never turned up to protect those women. Now, Worse than they, that, Lee, they, they stood by. They stood by, that's right. They stood by. They completely and utterly stood by. And I think that there's, like the chat before, um, what he said, I think that's a very good question. And I think there really should be an inquiry into the, the police's actions on this. But the other thing I want to say is that the global implications for our tourism are absolutely shocking. Oh, yeah, Lee, there's that been that whole... But, look, I'll be honest, I'm not into cancel culture like that. I'm not into the boycotts. No, I'm but, into but fixing the, only, the problem the with the police and the media and yeah. free speech. Yeah, but I also think that the only way that that can be fixed is the money. Because if they see that 
people are, are boycotting coming to New Zealand. And women are 52% of the population. So if there's a lot of, and, and Twitter is rife with this, that people, of women are feeling unsafe about coming to New Zealand. And the way how the, you know, New Zealand is promoted, that we're all very, you know, wonderful and diverse and everything like that. Well, like me, on Thursday when I decided that I needed to buy that hard hat, like the fact that I felt it, that it was whipped up into such a frenzy. Now, I also texted a reporter that I had been talking with prior to the event and I texted him within probably three minutes to say, where are the police? Yeah. So, you know, and he texted me back saying, oh, we've got two cameras on the ground. Great, great, two cameras. Yeah. Well, That's, I'd like to know, see, I'd like me to see some, some prosecutions yeah. now. People are coming out saying they threw the soup or they punched someone and there's plenty of video evidence. Lee, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, exactly. I'm going to have... And the other thing, can, yeah, I, can, yeah. I, can I just say yeah. that... That there is there is a long history of women being attacked with acid. Now nobody knows yeah. what was in those liquids that were thrown at her. No. They could have been. They could have they been. Could have been acid. They could have been acid. They could have been anything, and the police allowed that to happen. I agree. With happen that. and and also the, the the person who who admitted actually throwing that that the red yeah, liquid that, yeah. over Kelly J is a chemist. Wow, that's that scary. Is a and good chemist. friends and good friends with the Green Party. And, and a good bloke. With and the Green a bloke. Party. As far as And a bloke, exactly. Yes. Yes. Lee, I think so if you, thank I you thank you for your call, I gotta move through. Because, as I said, we've thrown out some interviews this morning, uh, but I had talked to Helen Houghton, the leader of the Conservative Party, who I understand was at the protest, and I promised to talk to her this morning, and she joins us now. Helen, thank you very much. I'm sorry we've had to bump things around a bit. It's been very busy. Oh, look, that's OK, Sean. I'm so grateful that you are allowing the voice of all those women today, and like many of those other women who have called in, I'm still somewhat in disbelief of the degree of anger and threats that were towards us on Saturday. I've never been surrounded by such mass aggression. OK, why did you go along and what was your role there? Okay, so my role, I went along, I attended the event um, on Saturday to represent and speak up for women. Look, an event about women, by women, for women. And what I witnessed was an attack on women. No matter what people thought about Kelly J, her event was a free speech opportunity to listen to the concerns of a sex that feels let down and vulnerable in their spaces. And that's why I was there. Uh, look, let's get real here. That was not a counter-protest from the trans community. That was an attack on another protected group, women. Women are clearly not protected. Abusing women for their opinion is nothing to be proud of. And as that crowd celebrated in a frenzy with their intimidating behaviour, forced the handful of women remaining on stage to seek safety. And I was one of those on the stage. And I'm telling you, it was a handful of women left on that stage. We could not move. We were surrounded um, I feel disgusted that New Zealand has a government that has empowered one group of people, given them the power to shut down and silence the voice of women, as well as society who have different beliefs. Look, our country has a stain after Saturday, the way they treated or witch-hunted Kelly J. And I apologise to her. However, Sean, can I just say, my focus, however... All the while that the focus was on Kelly J, what about our New Zealand woman? Those yeah, who were and that's what I've under. heard this morning, Helen... So many women yeah. who were there who wanted to speak, who wanted to be in Wellington to speak, and in some ways, Posey's gone home. She's gone back to Britain. We are left with the problem, aren't we? Absolutely. Those women, they were so emotional. You know, I had tears in my eyes when I was listening to some of them. Poor Mel, please, if Mel's out there listening, give her my details. I want to talk to her. I know exactly how she feels. There were women on that stage with me. There was one who was pregnant who's written me a letter. She's put that letter out. I am making a complaint to the police minister. The law are there to protect people. The government are there to represent all people. And I am literally disgusted in the behaviour of some of those Green MPs. The statements that they made online afterwards is absolutely disgusting. They're, you know, this is not even just about the Saturday. This is ongoing. They're out there celebrating, celebrating that they've attacked women's rights. Trans, 
um, trans people get accolades and praised for their courage and women who stand up for their rights and stand up for children get ridiculed and abused. How is that for equity and inclusion? What about the Minister of Women? Where is her on this? Yeah. Well, we'll it's find out today. Yeah, what yeah, would you, you know, Helen, what would you like me to ask Chris Atkins at his press conference today? Okay, I would say this. There were four guys with me on that rotunda, at least four, with us trying to keep the transgender movement from attacking the woman left there. They were kept busy trying to stop the men from hurting the woman. Now, the activists had one woman pinned to the ground, and all she was doing was holding onto a banner saying, let women speak. Those men saved her. And then we grabbed the woman who were left on stage arm in arm. I didn't know any of them, and we had to push through that hostile crowd to get out safely. So, hey, but uh, Chris Luxon tells me it looked pretty peaceful. Oh, my gosh. I have got video footage. I have video footage that I would like to send to you for you to release. Yep. Uh, I so. will be. Yeah. If, if it wasn't for them, we would have been seriously hurt. There is no doubt. Even some of those men who had actually um, been in security roles were afraid as well. It was a, it was, there was nothing peaceful about that. Nothing peaceful. Helen, um, I thank you for calling in. Sorry we messed you around on the timing. We've just been very busy listening to uh, Look, people tell I their stories. I appreciate all the time that you've given to the woman today. Thank you for allowing them to speak. Thank you for giving them a voice, Sean. And I'll be in touch because there's a lot of other things I want to talk to you about. All it's right. It's really important what this government is allowing in thank our education system. Thank you. Thank you. That is Helen Houghton. She's the leader of the Conserv New Conservative Party. New Conservative Party. And she's just a woman, and she's a New Zealander, and she believes in free speech. And if anyone, if you're buying the Herald or the stuff, uh, buying what they're selling, um, God, I have to say it, wake up New Zealand. Oh, I, hate, I hate feeling like I, I'm campaigning for something. I'm just campaigning for some basic free speech and human rights in a country that I love. In a country that I absolutely love. Um, Jane, Jane, welcome to the platform. Morning, Sean. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Got you loud and clear. Oh, great, great stuff. Hey, um, just just another woman calling in that was there on Saturday. Hugely disappointed by how things rolled out. Hugely disappointed by the the lack of response from the police. As I, as I came in for the event, I had to drive around Albert Park, and there were plenty of empty police cars parked along the street. There was a, a police van as well, and there were there were a couple of cops at a time sort of on the peripheral of the park, but as everyone, everyone else has said, they were nowhere to be seen once the things started to, to kick off. Um, the, the noise started at about 22, quarter to 11 from the crowd as they surged forward. Um, and I think someone else had said, I, I assumed that the sort of double barrier that there was was for the police to stand in between, um, but, they, but they never came. Um, I remember going to some peace, peace, very peaceful rallies through the um, COVID restriction time, um, and uh, very peaceful rallies, nothing happening there, but there was a huge police present, cops walking around with long lens cameras, taking photos yeah. of people just stood peacefully. Um, nothing, nothing like that at, at this event. Um, I think uh, if you're going to be at the, press, uh, the Prime Minister's um, gallery this afternoon, I remember watching an interview with Chris Hipkins last week on news, well, I, I saw it mm. on replay, but on the AN show where mm. he's talking about the right of the the trans protesters to to have um, a peaceful and safe yeah, environment. Yeah, well, they didn't have a peaceful um, for process. Freedom of speech. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Um, I, I left the crowd. I was surrounded, but I left the crowd at the point where the activists were pulling cards and signs out of um the people the peaceful people, the people were you were you afraid Jane? um I, I wasn't afraid for me um i was certainly afraid for jenny k king that's who they were targeting there were chants in, in the, the the peripheral of where i was there were chants of die posy die um go kill yourself go kill yourself um i yeah, yeah you know i've heard some hate in my time but what was levied at that woman on saturday was just inexcusable um, the majority of the people that I saw it again in the crowd where I was were men, um, and I, I can't I can't fathom it. it. You know, just the irony of that that whole scenario: men shouting down women, one woman, one woman on her own. You know, there's nothing brave or courageous about that, and it's it's sickening. It really is. Um, 
you know, I'm just, I'm still reeling really from it. I'm just disappointed mainly though that um, we didn't get to, the the people that were there for the purpose of hearing women speak didn't get the opportunity. So again, yeah. like everyone else has said, thank you for that opportunity this morning. Um, just yeah, and and where do we go from here? You, well, you Jane, know, what kind Jane of, we keep talking, we keep providing platforms, yeah. and we keep promoting free speech. Yeah, and we have yeah. faith in but each please, other. Yeah, no, no, that's true. That's true. But, you know, I'm sure you have them, but seriously, think think long and hard about the questions for Chris Hipkins this afternoon, yeah. please. Make him as uncomfortable as possible. I, I, I just want to get the truth. I, I want to find a way forward. Yeah. I think we all do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. Um, oh, oh, look, I haven't had a more... I haven't had a day like it on radio, to be honest, um, or in my broadcasting career. There is something wrong. I wasn't wrong when I sat there on Saturday and said, uh, uh, this ain't right. This ain't right at all. Um, thank you for your calls. Keep them coming. Uh, Ray. G'day, Ray. How are you? Oh, good. Uh, Sean, um, I was disgusted when I saw it, watched it live on um, Saturday, and my son and husband, who haven't really been following it, did, weren't watching it, but they said, oh, my God, have you seen what's happening? You know? And so yeah. they were shocked, even though they haven't been following it. I would like you to encourage everyone who has video that shows the violence to send it to Chris Luxton. And to Let Chris Hipkins? What about it. Chris Hipkins, who's actually the Prime yes, Minister? Yep, him as well. Yeah. And also to Erica Stanford, because I heard her on Q&A yesterday with Jack Payne pretty much saying that if she had had to hit that file on her desk about Kelly, she would have banned her. Probably. Yeah, I see. That's not the answer. No, exactly. And it's not good enough. I did send you the video of that Trinity Ice. Elbowing yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Trinity there. Ice is now well known to us, uh, I imagine, and I'm yeah, sure so, she'll be getting arrested today. So I, I just would encourage everyone: don't rely on what you saw on the media, on the on news, the mainstream media. Yeah. It was no, no, and I'm sure at the back of that protest were well-meaning people that w went there to yeah, me too. literally just quietly protest, but it was the mob at the front. That yeah. caused the trouble, probably. Yeah. And I'm ashamed of the police. I'm ashamed of those people. And I've always supported the trans community and their rights. The only thing I... I don't care if they use my toilet. That's a cubicle. I care if they're in the change room with young girls at local sports events changing in front of them. Yeah. You know, that, that's what I care about. I care about where the woman feels uncomfortable. I don't feel uncomfortable in a in a in a cubicle at a toilet with them, yeah. you know? But yeah. you know, we, we we this is not about that now. This has gone way beyond well, and, and that's my point. Yeah. This isn't about Posey Parker anymore. It's not about trans rights anymore. It's about democracy and freedom of speech and rule of law. Yeah. yeah. And I would like if you could at all to maybe send to Posey the, you know, the three hours that you've just done, so she can hear that it wasn't the people of New yeah. Zealand. Look, look, I've talked to her. I talked to her on Saturday night. We had some conversations, and she knows that most of New Zealand is appalled at oh. what happened. The other thing I want to say: my son works in a major hotel. Yeah. And he said, "How the god did they find out what room she was?" Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you. The hotel, having booked her for Friday and Saturday night, we're going to kick her out on Saturday, Ray. And I'll and I tell can, and I'll tell I you what I was doing that. Saturday morning. Saturday morning, I was trying to find her a safe house in Auckland, and I was trying to find her a safe house in Wellington for her visit. Yeah, she needs to be in a house, not in a hotel. Yeah, yeah. Because even though the front office staff might protect her. There's too many staff in hotels that can let, mm. let it slip. Yeah. You know? No, and that, 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 she turned that, up and, as it. I said, that's there was a death threat basically. waiting for her at our, her hotel. And, look, that's just disgusting. That's disgusting. Yeah. Thanks, Absolutely Ray. Disgusting. Thank you for your call. 0800 332283. Um, text 5050. Michael Law's along after the news at 10 o'clock. Um 
And you know what? For the first time this morning, I don't have a woman on the line. So, uh, Josh, you get a go. Good morning, mate. Oh, well, let me give you a perspective from a girl then. Uh, well, from my, from my daughter's perspective, actually. Um, we were watching uh, the 6 o'clock news just to see what their perspective on what happened. And we were watching it, and um, my wife goes to me, man, these people are crazy. And I go, eh, and, th- and this is their plea to get into our toilets with the girls. Like, <laughs> Like, this is, oh, yeah, sure, we'll let you guys into our toilets now. We'll see you guys as women now. Like, this is the worst advertising for transgenders. Like, it's just absolutely stupid and crazy. I had, I, I, I ran a software company, and I used, I hired transgenders. Like, I had yeah. no problem with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. No problem. But if that's, <laughs> that's what you're advertising to us, that's the way you guys behave. Why would we want you guys to exist in uh, female spaces? Yeah. Females are supposed to be protected. And uh, my wife, uh, uh, me and her have been arguing about my, uh, well, not arguing, but just debating whether my daughter should do, do MMA and jiu-jitsu. And yep. I've had her enrolled in it for the last uh, year because I wanted her to be able to protect herself when I can't. And... Uh, this is the reason why. Because these crazy lunatics are going to be in the same bathroom as her. Yeah. They're going to be in the same changing rooms as her. And I want her to be able to tap these motherfuckers out if they touch her. And that's that's where we're going to go to if these police also don't protect our freedom of speech. Right, Sean? If they don't protect our freedom of speech, then I'm going to be there with my daughter if she's protesting. And I'm going to be knocking cunts out if they touch her. Like that's where this goes. Yeah, hang on, mate. Hang on, and Josh, 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 I'm not going to let you come on here and advocate violence, mate. (laughs) As a, as a, a, I'm not. I'm just not. I thank you for your call and be a good mum, be a good dad to to your daughter, but don't advocate uh, violence against any group or any people. It's not the answer ever. There we go. Thank you, Josh. Um, I just want to let you know, by the way, the person who assaulted Posey Parker. Her name is. Eliana Rabashkin. Eliana Rabashkin is a bloke. Um, she came to New Zealand a, as a refugee. She's a friend of the Green Party. She's transgender, so she's a bloke. Um, a transgender woman, which means she's a bloke. Uh, she's clearly deeply involved with the Green Party, uh, with people uh, like Chloe Schwabrick and um, Marama Davidson. And she is the person who assaulted, um, who assaulted um, the Posey Parker. Um, and I imagine the police know exactly where she's lived, lives, and I would hope she would be arrested and charged with assault today. Let's see. It was Mercure Hotel Group, I am told, that cancelled the bookings for Posey J Parker. The Mercure Hotel Group, good on them. Um. Here we go. Um, oh, and I'm not going to storm anyone. I'm not going to say hit these people back. I'm not going to say stand up and have a bigger counter protest protest. I'm going to say let's let's get back to the rule of law. Let's get back to freedom of speech. Let's get back to democracy. Uh, and I guess I can ask, what do you want? We've got ten, six minutes. What do you want me to ask the Prime Minister at his press conference this afternoon, provided he goes ahead with it? Uh, Glenn, thank you for waiting. How can I help? G'day, Sean. How are you doing? Good show this morning. Thank you. Thank you. We're trying. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I uh, I really respect the women who were there um, standing up for women's rights and should have had to say, but more importantly, Chris Luxon was lukewarm. To call that mere intimidation is just shows the lack of... Uh, reality amongst many of our politicians. And here's the tester for Ginny, uh, our new police minister. What will she be telling the police now to do? There are people that need to be arrested and there are people that need to be charged under the rule of law. So, um, you know, that, it's important that that has to be done. So, yeah, good luck, good show, Sean. Thank you very much, Glenn, and thank you for your call and thank you for waiting. Uh, Chris, how are you, Chris? I'm good, thank you, Sean. I just want to say that um, appalled with what I saw um, on the news, not mainstream news, but um, 
just into a dune once said you'll see you'll know hate hate beat when you see it. Well we saw it on Saturday and I feel sorry for um all the women and I just wanna say that men, real men, stand up and support you because that was just not good enough. Good on you, Chris. Yeah, police good on you. have a hard look at themselves. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh Matt, good day. Hey, mate, I haven't got much time, of, uh, but I'll call you back tomorrow. But just briefly, I went to go on Saturday. Uh, my office is in Shortland Street, just across from Albert uh, Park. I've got two daughters, another one due any day. Um, I, I didn't go in there because I was worried for my safety to go in there. Yeah. To not be... All I wanted to do was listen to what the, the women were going to say. That's all I wanted to do, so... I saw the cops doing nothing. I got the hell out of there, went over to my office where I can sort of see down on it. It all sort of ended. So I went for a wander down to Queen Street, saw the Destiny people marching, and then came the, the protesters straight behind them. Yeah. And I was, I was stood listening and watching, and it was not peaceful. It was aggressive. It was angry. They were a mob. There's no, absolutely no question about that. And I overheard a couple of people talking, a young man, a young woman, and a much older man, speaking with pride about how they had thrown things at her and how she had been chased off the stage and chased away from the protest. I couldn't resist it, so I went up to them. And I said, I hear you guys boasting about what, what just happened down there. You guys are proud of it. They were immensely proud of it. I said, all I wanted to do was hear what she had to say. Yeah, and, and Matt, you know them, what? That victory is going to be ashes, as Kennedy said, like ashes in their mouths. I thank you for your call, and mate. I've just got to get I've got to get through these two. Jennifer, thank you for ringing in. How can I help? Yeah, good morning, Sean. Hey, listen, um, can you ask Chris Hipkins um, about, well, misogyny and his part that he plays on it? Um, you go back and you look at... Uh, during COVID, he um, accused those two women of being prostitutes. Um, you know, he bullied a pregnant woman, and now he's defending uh, people that are attacking women. Um, freedom to speech. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just appalled at the government, politicians, media. I'm just so frustrated. I, I also called 111 um, yeah. because I was so afraid for, for their safety. I just, I'm just gutted. It's a gutter by the whole of the country. I hear you, Jennifer. I thank you for your call. Amanda, good morning to you. Hi, Sean. Um, thank you this morning for what you're doing. I'm so heartbroken for this country. I, as a woman, I felt... I just watched the live stream and I felt oppressed and I felt powerless and I felt scared for my daughters, for my daughter and my nieces. And I just stand with all those women who have spoken... Today, this is my first time on Talk Back. I'm just a bit emotional. <laughs> but thank you for standing up for us. Thank you for those women who have gone before us, who fought for our rights to vote, our rights, all those people that protested before. I feel like those are in danger, and that's the point of yeah. what women are trying to make. It's not about anyone else. It's about those who have gone before us, those who have fought for what we have today. I'm 46. I never would have thought I'll be talking about this now. Amanda, I thank you for your call, and this is your platform. This is where you can say what you think and believe, and we'll keep you safe. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ingeborg, Ingeborg, not a classic Kiwi name. Welcome to the platform. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much for everything you do for everyone, including women. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm just an ordinary woman. I'm a Kiwi, um, and this is my country as well, and I'm, I'm worried about ordinary women, women like me who I, I'm not an activist, I'm not an aggressive person, I don't want to fight, I just want women to have their right to speak. New Zealand was the country that first gave women the vote, and I'm petrified, really, that this is happening. Um, and what should we do? Ordinary women, we're, we're the, just the backbone, really, of ordinary people. And what do you think we should do? I think you should... I'm going to be honest. I think you should listen to the platform more. I think you should tell your friends, too. I think you should ignore mainstream, bent news media. 
I think you should hold politicians and people in public office to account when they display the sort of craziness that Tory Farnow, the Mayor of Wellington, has. I think you should hold people like Christopher Luxon to account when he says it looked pretty peaceful to him. And I also think yes. you should, in the meantime, get on with living your best life and look for joy in the world Absolutely. and the things that make Absolutely. you happy. Absolutely. And I do think we should speak up, but not in an aggressive way. Yeah. We don't achieve anything by that. Yeah. Um, but um, it's hard to speak up and um, to be heard when you're just an ordinary Kiwi mom. Well, you're not. You're part of us. Um, and, Thank you. And Thank you're part you of the country much. we are. Thank you, Ingeborg. That's it. What a morning. Um, thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben, for setting that up and keeping the phones going. Thank you, all of you. Um, and we will, of course, keep talking about this. I, I wondered if I was in my own little echo chamber being as concerned as I was about what happened on Saturday, um, the remarkable response from all of you. Uh, women and men today tells me I wasn't. Um... And, uh, look, thank you. Thank you for everyone, uh, men uh, and women who called in, straight, gay, trans, whatever. Um, let's fix this, shall we?